It has been over a year since my original Epic Commander tier list video and absolutely everything has changed since then. What's going on guys? Cheers. I can't believe it's been since May of 2020 that I made my original Epic Commander tier list video. So this video is long overdue because literally everything on that list has changed. The entire list is different. Okay. And that's because the entire game is different. Now, this tier list is an open field PVP tier list. And the reason that I'm specifying that is because of course, some Epic commanders are better for PVP content. For example, some Epic commanders, you know, are better for running to particular objectives like Belisarius, for example. So there's a lot of different things that you can do in this game, right? But I want to focus on open field fighting for a couple of reasons. One, you're never going to lead a rally with an Epic commander unless it's maybe like pre KVK one civil war in your home kingdom or something like that. Uh, and two, you're never going to lead a garrison with your Epic commanders. Now you may have an Epic commander on the wall of your city, but my recommendation for you is that you should never take a rally with an Epic on your wall. Like really you should never take a rally on your city unless you can handle it. Uh, most players can't. So you normally shouldn't, but you get what I'm trying to say. So this video is mainly for the newer players in rise of kingdoms, because if you're an older player, you should just be using one or two legendary commander marches the rest should be filling rare uh, rallies and garrisons but if you're new to the game right i wanted to make this tier list for you now the way that i'm going to be building the tier list and just to give you guys sort of an idea of my thought process here is a i'm using mainly my experience with the game right i've been playing the game for what over a thousand how many days has it been let's see it's been 1023 days since i started playing rise of kingdoms also what commanders do i normally see in the open field in lost canyon in sunset canyon that's where I'm getting most of my, uh, most of my recommendations from. However, I also was sort of curious as to like, what is really like the DPS of a commander's skill kit. And I went through and I tested all of them in the expedition 70 dash one here. You can actually rally a particular target with a, you know, with your, with your commanders. I used uh, an ethyl flood primary and rotated out the secondary for all the different epics just to get like a sort of a baseline as to like where they might fall. And again, this is not a great test, right? I understand that you're doing single target damage factor and incorporates a rally scenario. So therefore commanders like Osman are going to do better and CPO because you have more troops. I know that, you know, mostly in open field fights, you're going to get surrounded. So again, I know that this is not a great test, but I just sort of wanted to get a basic baseline of damage for a commander skill. Okay. So without further ado, let's jump into the tier maker. Okay. So we've got all the Epic commanders down here, plus Ethel fled, and we're going to talk about her a little bit later. Now we also have a Canyon tier down here. And at the end of the video, we're going to be talking about which which of these commanders could you actually use in sunset canyon as a free-to-play player because in that that sort of a different beast all in itself anyway let's talk about by bars okay by bars is first up on this commander tier list and by bars is really not that great right he's got a really solid aoe nice damage factor five targets it's great he also has a little bit of march speed when he leaves battle tiny amount of healing factor he also gives you 20 percent of attack which is really the least beneficial stat especially in kvk right in, in season of conquest so you know it's really he's not that great of a commander okay and and previously i've talked really well about him i think i put him in the a tier for the last video or something like that uh but by bars is a b tier uh, commander right again really solid open field aoe damage factor but besides that i'm really not that impressed okay you can use him secondary to belisarius to get around pretty quickly but that's really his only use uh, and also canyon we'll talk about that later next up is belisarius now belisarius is also a cavalry commander the thing about belisarius is he's really not doing damage that's the problem with Bel belisarius is he's just not that great he's slightly more tanky than belisarius he's applying a debuff to the target which is nice he does have the mobility tree which makes him very useful because he's the easiest commander to get to level 60 with the mobility tree other commanders being mostly legendary commanders right like you have south south takeda those types of commanders are a bit harder to get to level 60 so for that reason you're going to see belisarius a bit more strictly again for that march speed which is nice for a free, free to play or low spender especially in things like arc of osiris for example you want to move around the map fast um is he a heavy hitting super powerful commander with a really nice debuff no uh he's 
you know, low on the damage, solid on the debuff, incredible on the March speed. And, you know, because of his unique role with that March speed, I am going to put him in the A tier. You do see Belisarius more than most Epic commanders strictly for that March speed. And for that reason, he's in the A tier. Next, let's talk about Bjorn, the newest epic commander here in rise of kingdoms bjorn has a decent three target aoe his specialty is increasing the amount of skill damage that the enemy is taking that's really powerful in what's sort of his niche role he's also a really nice infantry commander he's got a, a nice spread of stats between attack and defense and his fourth skill gives you a nice chance of doing some single target damage factor which is cool when he was first announced and we first saw his skills i did think he was going to be an s tier commander but realistically again you just don't see uh, epic commanders too much in in rise of kingdoms anymore after season one or two um and for that reason you know you don't really see him too much in sunset canyon either ultimately i think he is an a tier commander uh i am gonna put him above belisarius now again i know you probably will see belisarius slightly more in the late game for the march speed but from an actual like perspective of is he good i do think that bjorn is a very good epic commander he's just shy of s tier perhaps if his aoe hit five targets or it did a little bit more damage then sure we could put him in s tier but uh you know it, because of that he he lands at a very high a certainly good in the early game and uh we all love vikings next we're gonna be talking about Boudica. okay she is one of my favorite peacekeepers here in the game she has a nice single target damage factor she has a little bit of healing factor attack reduction rage regeneration she does sort of everything she also has a 10 percent chance of boosting her own uh, march's damage which is nice um ultimately she is a commander that doesn't specify in a specific troop type so that is working uh, to her disadvantage she's great in the early game falls off in the later game in my testing with her on the expedition level she was actually one of the best performing for single target damage factor which was surprising to me uh, and for that reason she is going to land herself in the b tier now again am i suggesting you use Boudica in the open field in season of conquest absolutely not uh, but she definitely performs better on a single target damage factor perspective than a lot of the other commanders we're going to talk about just objectively so because of that lands in b tier and you're going to be using her for the rest of the game to kill barbarians as well so you're going to see her a lot and yeah her single target damage factor did actually surprise me during that expedition testing so b tier she is next up we have dao chan right and and this is one of the new commanders that wasn't in the previous epic commander tier list video the thing about dao chan is that she actually got she gets a lot of hype right she gets a lot of hype because she deals technically the highest single target damage factor out of any uh, epic commander right if you take a look at her damage over time when she's expertise she's dealing a cumulative 1600 damage factor over the course of four seconds um honestly you know despite that and despite her healing factor being slightly better than Boudicca's she actually performs worse than Boudicca in my opinion right now she is better for killing barbarians because of her second skill she gets five percent more experience than Boudicca uh, but ultimately she performed worse in the expedition testing so even in a scenario where she should be outperforming most commanders in a scenario long-term single target damage factor scenario like a city rally she actually performed worse than Boudicca and I think that's because Boudicca is decreasing the enemy rage buffing her own rage and she has that 10% chance of a really substantial damage buff on her fourth skill uh so even though again Dao Chan single target damage factor is higher than Boudicca she performed worse and for that reason she lands herself in the C tier don't worry I'll show you guys my data that I collected from the expedition testing at the very end of the video so if you're curious to see that and where I'm getting this information just hang out till the end and we'll talk about it later next we're going to be talking about ulji mundok so he is a really solid infantry commander in the epic tier uh he is in my opinion and this you know slight spoiler here i think he is the worst of the infantry epics um but he's a little bit better than i originally gave him credit for now his single target damage factor is you know a little bit disappointing the 30 percent defense reduction for two seconds is very solid his fourth skill is nice because he actually has the chance to buff his own damage when he's surrounded he also has the attack tree which makes it even more beneficial for him to get surrounded because he gains more rage that way from the attack tree but even still you know to get that benefit he has to be a primary commander uh, I, I don't know I'm just I'm not a huge fan of Olgi I think he underperforms when it comes to you know when you look at Bjorn for example I think Bjorn is does it as a better active skill because he's providing uh, an, a better debuff so 
sure yulji has uh 30 percent of stats whereas um you know the skills on bjorn only give you 20 but i think ulji deserves the b tier now he does perform really well in the canyon because you do fight to the death there um and so i do think that of the commanders in the b tier he is the best b tier commander that we've talked about so far um but ultimately he's just he falls short of that a tier for sure next we're going to be talking about herman now herman is known for having a very high single target damage factor with the rage reduction for the enemy he has that two second silence on the active skill which is very unique for an epic commander he also has his fourth skill with the 10 percent chance to give him 100 rage and that's pretty much it he only has 10 percent attack with some march speed and he's sort of a one trick pony he's unique when he's paired as a primary for el cid for example but really you're not going to use epic commanders as primaries after season probably one or two of kvk again so in the testing that i did for expedition he performed virtually the same as Boudica, except he completed the job much faster so that means he has more damage per second so for that reason he definitely goes above Boudica, and he does specialize in a unit type which is definitely better for you know the talent trees but besides that i just don't I, like he's he's a one trick pony again single target damage factor virtually no stats that's pretty much it all right joan of arc joan of arc is pretty much a no-brainer and i think you guys sort of know where i'm going with this uh joan of arc is an s tier commander she is one of the last commanders uh, in the epic tier that you'll ever see in, you know, a, a Sunset Canyon, for example, right? She just has such a powerful AOE buff. You almost need to have a Joan of Arc around because of that buff. She also has a solid normal attack damage increase. You know, Herman has 10% normal attack damage increase. She has 25. So like, she's just so much better. She has some healing as well. Ultimately, she's just a really great commander. And on top of that, during this portion of the game where you're not fighting she's gathering you a ton of resources which is really awesome Joan of Arc absolutely deserves the S tier no doubt about that she is incredible next up is Kiera now Kiera is really interesting as a commander Kiera does a nice little AoE 1400 damage factor over the course of its entire duration now it does decrease by 15 percent per target which isn't something we see with someone like Bybars, for example who has a nice uh, big AoE with no reduction which is really interesting plus he hits up to five targets but really where uh, she shines is that she does have a nice stat distribution compared to, to by bars his is 20 percent attack hers is 10 percent attack 10 percent defense she also has a really nice chance uh to pop a huge amount of skill damage on her fourth skill this is increased when you're doing things like Soroli, so that's a little bit different um ultimately kiara is an a tier epic commander she performed pretty well in the expedition testing that i have on here besides osman and Scipio, she actually performed pretty much the best out of any commander in that testing um, and that's strictly because she just deals so much damage factor with the chance to pop huge skill damage buffs and I was again I was using ethyl flood primary so there was a chance over those you know three minutes or whatever that her fourth skill lined up with ethyl flood's massive AoE so there's a lot to love about uh, about Kiera now is she as used as you know Joan of Arc for example no she's definitely not in fact is she used as much as Belisarius also i don't think so i mean i really don't see too much kiara in the open field like you just don't see it and is it because she's bad no it's because she's an epic commander right and even though she's an a tier epic commander she's just not as good as legendaries even some 5511 legendaries right so for that reason you know you don't really see her too much next we're going to talk about kusanoki her archer brother okay he's also doing some nice archer aoe it's also some damage over time you uh unique with kusanoki is his ability to remove negative debuffs that is really really cool i do see some nice use for uh kusanoki in sunset canyon usually it's a kusanoki isongye that's sort of what you might see in the back row um it's not that common but it does perform decently well mainly because of isongye uh, but also you know the aoe on kusanoki is is decent for that reason he be he belongs in the a tier um you know him and kiera i think are very close kiera definitely deals more damage but the removal of debuffs from kusanoki is super unique uh so i think i'm gonna put kusunoki slightly ahead of her but you could definitely make the argument for kiara being ahead from a damage perspective so um it's whatever you want it to be these are again these pretty much interchangeable but the the debuff removal from uh kusunoki is very unique i'm gonna put him above uh kiara for that reason next we're gonna talk about lohar everybody knows lohar is a d tier commander when it comes to open field fighting his damage factors trash two of his skills don't do anything his talent trees are not meant for fighting he is not a good command for pvp you cannot make the case that he is there's nothing more to say about that let's talk about matilda slightly better than uh <laughs> lohar in my opinion when it comes to pvp fighting um there is a unique combination you could do with matilda um to use her siege units in canyon 
that's the only reason that she sort of goes above lohar here but literally from a from a fighting perspective in the open field matilda is not good in the open field now again i'm sure someone's gonna put in the comments that there's some weird combination you can do with her and some other commander with siege units to get value maybe right maybe but let's just keep it simple right do you use Matilda in the open field? The answer is no. She is a D tier commander. Let's talk about Osman. Now, Osman actually performed really well in my expedition testing, to my surprise. Not really. He is a con conquering commander. His single target damage factor is absolutely insane. And the fact that he brings more troops to the battlefield makes him prime for a test like that. So I think the test is skewed in his favor. Uh, but ultimately, do you see Osman in the open field? Rarely. You rarely see him in the open field. Does he deal a ton of single target? damage factor yes especially with a commander like genghis khan who has a massive rage engine you're just going to be like pumping out damage factor osman skill where he deals damage factor to a target after an active skill goes off is crazy with a rage engine so really solid stuff there but beyond that he doesn't do anything he just does tons of single target damage factor no stats 10 percent more troops uh ultimately he's a c tier commander in my opinion i think he's slightly better than dao chan just because you bring more troops meaning that army is going to be slightly stronger um that also means a higher hospital bill like I'm, i don't think you should use these commanders in open field fights but i think like if you're for if you put a gun to my head and said which one of these is better i would say probably osman again it depends on your primary commander if you have a rage engine you're going to be doing so much skill damage with osman that's crazy let's look at pelagius pelagius i think i rated him s tier last time like he was the worst s tier um my opinion on pelagius has changed substantially okay uh, pelagius gives you 30 percent of stats which is nice he has single target damage factor he has some healing he's he's good on paper but when you do testing with him he just doesn't perform he um, he just doesn't i'm sorry i want to rate him higher i really do i loved pelagius in the early game he was he's so good with minamoto right as a as a pair but ultimately you see him not that much right you honestly see him less than you see belisarius and bybars because you can kill farmers with these two you can use these two to run around in in uh run away from enemies you can see them used in you know arc of osiris right just to get a fast march speed march out there uh and ultimately they're just used more for that reason so even though on paper pelagius looks great i mean from a from a from a testing perspective right when i tested him in 70-1 uh in, in expedition he couldn't even complete it like he couldn't even beat it right so like he's just even single target damage factor is low compared to the other commanders that we see here so ultimately pelagius c tier epic commander unfortunately scipio last time i put him in the a tier because at that time i was using him as a primary with my joan of arc secondary and the game has changed significantly since then back then yes he wasn't performing that well but he was pretty tanky and you could use him because it is what it is we are much farther along in the game now there's no way that if you see a cpo in the open field that you're not gonna swarm it down you're just gonna get trash trades with cpo yes he's decent in early game sunset canyon but ultimately he is a c tier commander and the worst one at that in my opinion and that again that has changed dramatically since the last time but again the game is very different since then cpo unfortunately he looks so cool right he looks so cool but unfortunately i do think he is a c tier epic commander finally sun tzu we already know where this boy's going right he is interchangeable with number one i really go back and forth as to which one i think is better you know a charles martel sun tzu secondary is just a solid open field pairing but you know having like a constantine joan or a richard joan just buffing everybody around you is also insanely versatile uh, and it's harder to track that 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 performance but absolutely sun tzu is an s tier epic commander one of the last uh that you definitely will see in sunset canyon for sure he is very very good you know if his damage factor was maybe slightly higher or if he gave you maybe slightly more health um then he would be a legendary commander basically right um he's very good he's very good i love his aoe the ability to regenerate rage when you hit more targets with that aoe it's just crazy he's very good he's very versatile you can throw him in a lot of different builds uh and he's just he performs really really well i don't think this needs to be said but He's an S tier commander. Okay, now which of these commanders might we see in Sunset Canyon? Well, of course, you could pick the top commanders and that would be a solid choice, but you would be missing out on some hidden gems. So let's go ahead and move in the commanders.
commanders that would actually be worth it to use in sunset canyon all right we've put all the epic commanders that we think you could use in sunset canyon to some sort of an effect as you can see here there's an odd number so we're going to throw in ethelflaed because she is usable there you're never going to use lohar or really any other of these commanders here like there's just a lot of single target damage factor here low damage not stuff you want in sunset canyon you know you, you have obviously osman is sort of an exception because he brings more troops to the battlefield uh but the reason cpo is here is because he brings just more troops and not so effective in sunset canyon matilda is here because you could pair her with joan and have a full siege uh, army and you can actually do decently well with it surprisingly so if we're gonna build like five marches and th this um this is not the best five free to play marches for canyon okay just to be clear but if we were forced to build five marches here we're gonna do something like this those are like the five uh you know if you're forced to use virtually only epics with ethel fled this is the five that i would build um you have a full archer march that you would put in the back row you have the ulji primary cpo secondary full tank march uh you're gonna get swarmed here so having a ton of troops with the attack tree on ulji is great um having a sun Tzu bjorn is gonna just be full infantry really nice and then you have obviously ethel fled with uh with by bars tons of aoe there which is something that we really really like and then we have that gimmicky march down here with joan buffing you and matilda uh, this is sort of you know this is not again i'm just throwing this out there these are the commanders that i would use uh that i would recommend for canyon if you're forced to only use epics as a early game player now for those of you who were curious to know the results of the expedition testing when i was rallying the city you could see here i have this ordered by units remaining obviously uh, osman has the most units remaining and cpo because they actually bring more units period matilda had the most remaining because her damage was so low that she didn't finish it and had a ton of units left right that's kind of the uh the interesting about matilda so yes yeah, she had a ton left but she didn't do any damage right so that's that's that um you could see kiara here actually performing pretty well she had a ton of units remaining finished the 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 rally pretty quickly compared to everybody else actually she was the fastest at finishing this right behind herman so really nice stuff there Budoka comes in uh in sixth place Herman and this is again by units remaining if we look at like time taken for example oh I'm sorry Osman was actually the fastest so yeah Osman uh, he's sort of an outlier though right we talked about that um Herman Kusunoki Bybars Budoka Ulji Sun Tzu I wish he performed a little bit better but if you look at the numbers he's very you know similar to Ulji and some of these other ones obviously Joan of Arc doesn't deserve this disrespect because she kind of does, does something a little bit different but yeah Pelagius performed really poorly here couldn't even finish it had a ton of units remaining it, it's just really embarrassing so again I know this is not not a great test right I just figured I would share this results with you just so you know how I sort of got a baseline of their skills anyway guys with that being said if you enjoyed this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it of course if you're new around here subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your favorite epic commanders do you think I'm right do you think I'm wrong what do you think are the best epic commanders here in rise of kingdoms I would love to hear from you guys as always my social media links are in the description below so make sure you follow me over there on instagram twitter facebook discord all that stuff it's always down below as well as a link to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free for your pc it's a program called blue stacks it's my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms blue stacks 5 performs really really well on my computer so go ahead and click that link give it a try it does support the channel and if you don't like it you can always uninstall it later with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace